say this with me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I can have what it says I can have. Today, today, I'm going to find out what my Bible says. It will lift me up out of darkness and into light, sickness into health, poverty into wealth, defeat into victory. I will never be the same. The Word of God will be sown in my heart, and my heart is good soil. In Jesus' name, amen. Give two people a high five. Tell them, yes, I can, right before you see seated. Turning your Bibles to Psalm 118, your Bible and the Psalm 118. Go to Psalm 118 and 1 Corinthians 13. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another privilege and opportunity to gather around your word. We thank you at your word that gives us life. It gives us victory in every area of our lives. So once again, we do look reverently to your word to behold the wondrous things out of thy law. I'm asking you on today to anoint every ear to hear and every heart to receive. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Psalm 118, verse 25, and then you're going to put your ribbon because I'm going to work out a psalm, out of this psalm, out of the psalms. All right, Psalm 118, verse 25, save now, I pray, O Lord, O Lord, I pray, sin what? Sin now, prosper. Come in, Mike, get my grip because I'm going to pay for amen. I, I, this, I, I got some, okay, praise the Lord. All right, let's see what happens now. Get ready. All right. Now, notice the last two words says, sin now what? Sin now prosperity. I want to share with you five divine laws or principles that will produce material and financial prosperity in your life. Now, in the first uh in the first service, we talked about uh, faith. We dealt with this, this area of, of faith because whatever you receive from God, uh, you have to mix faith with it. That's, that's Hebrews 4 and 2. But now I want to I wanna give you a statement that's going to guide the lesson, okay? That's going to guide the lesson. One profound statement, and that is this. Prosperity is a vital part of the gospel, and it is the will of God for every believer. Now, leave that up there. I need you to get that because that's going to guide the rest uh, of the service. I got about 30 minutes, and, and that I'm going to explain that. We're going to break that down because I wholeheartedly believe that. I grew up in the inner city of Brooklyn, New York. I grew up in the hood. I grew up in and around poverty, and I found out that that, that when Jesus died on the cross, not only did he, not only did he take or die for my sin, but he also took at the same time, he took poverty and he took sickness. Most, uh, I grew up and came up in the church where they preached a lot in the area of Jesus took your sin, he died for your sins, he died, he died, he died. And so he preached, we, pre we heard salvation messages pretty much every, sing every Sunday. But then I found out now that at the same time he took my sin, he also took sickness and disease and poverty and lack. Amen. I discovered that prosperity is a vital part of the gospel. What do you mean? It's money with a mission. It's riches with a reason. It's important that God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others and help fund this end time harvest. Because everything, shout out everything. Everything associated with the gospel, with getting the gospel out, it costs money. The gospel is free, but the pipeline costs a lot of money. So money in the hands of a Christian becomes a tool of evangelism to help get the gospel out. Now, notice now, the second part of that statement is, and it's the will of God for every believer to prosper materially and financially. I don't care where you at right now. I don't care where you start. It ain't where you start, it's where you finish. Well, you may be so broke you can't pay attention. You may be broken in the Ten Commandments and poor as Job's turkey if he had one. It don't make no difference. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to show you. Go to Psalm 1. It is the will of God. Now, when I want to know the will of God, I don't, I don't listen to the media. I don't listen to CNN or Fox. When I want to know the will 
of God for my life, I go to the word of God. Because the will of God is the word of God. God and his will, God and his word are one. Whenever you want to know the will of God, the will of God is found in the word of God. The word of God is God's mind on any matter that ends all debates and all arguments. Now, I always, I don't, I always know what God is going to do. I always know what he's going to do. Uh, Mark 16, 20, he's going to confirm his word. God is a covenant keeper and a promise. God cannot lie. I don't know how. Okay, I leave the how to him, but I always know what he's going to do. He's going to do exactly what he said in his word. The Bible says in Acts 17, 11, which is a, is a verse that we take very seriously at Showers of Blessing Christian Center. Acts 17, 11 says the Berean Christians, they examined the Bible to see if they supported what he said. In other words, the Apostle Paul preached to them in Acts 17, 11. And they turned around and searched the strip. They, they didn't just take him. They didn't just take it because he said it. They went to the Bible out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. And they said, oh, he's telling me the truth. Never put anyone above the word of God. Your faith must rest in the word of God and not in the opinions of men. I'm going to show you. What thus saith the Lord, and then the Bible says this, look at this, look at um, Psalm 1 and verse number 3. Prosperity is a vital part of the gospel, and somebody uh, stand up and tell me the second part of that verse, and what? Uh-uh. Prosperity is a vital part of the gospel. That the statement, this, I'm sorry, the statement that I made. The statement that I made. Go put the statement back up, Helen. The second part of the statement. Somebody stand up, give me the second part of the statement. And it's the will of, I seen both. Hey, come here, Mike. Both of them. One, two, both of them stood up. That's what I did. You see that? No, I already gave you some get 20 there, 20 there. Uh, okay, praise it. Whoever, whoever. Okay, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, all right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring it up to 40 now. Let me see if I can. I'm gonna get okay, watch this. Prosperity is a vital part of the gospel, and it's the will of God for every what? Proverbs 132, jot it down. Proverbs 132 in the old King James Version of the Bible tells us that the only person that should not prosper is a fool. If you're a fool, you don't qualify. But I know, I know ain't no, I ain't, look, at, look, at, look down your road, look down your road. So it tells us my mom ain't raised no fool. My mom ain't raised no fool. A fool is someone who doesn't, who doesn't acknowledge God or consider his leadership or wisdom as being necessary in their everyday decision making. If you're not a fool, then you qualify for biblical prosperity. Amen? Now, look at the will of God. This is the, um, we're going to read the word. I, I could go throughout, but I'm going to just give you a few verses. Psalm 1 and verse 3. Psalm 1 verse what? Psalm 1 verse, make sure your neighbor has it so they won't be borrowing no money from you. They get it for themselves, all right? Psalm 1 verse 3 says this. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. prosper. Go to over to Psalm 35. Psalm 35, I'm reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Every time you see the word prosper or prosperity, highlight it, circle it, underline it, do something with it. Psalm 35 and verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause and let them say continually. How often? Yeah, you got to say it. You got to say it and say it. Let the, let the Lord be magnified. Watch this. Who has pleasure in the good class. Prosperity of his servant. So God is pleased when I prosper, when I do well. If God gets pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, the opposite is also true. The converse is true. He must get displeasure when you're struggling. Mm. All right. We see it. I'm, I'm showing you. I'm, I'm showing you in your Bible. Now, I'm not I'm not making none of this up. In fact, jot down Job 3611. Job 3611 is a favorite verse in this ministry. Uh, if you obey and serve him, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasures. Glory. Yeah. Jot down third John two. Third John two says, beloved, I wish or pray above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul 
prosperous. It's the will of God for every believer to pro I don't care what side of the track you on right now. I don't care what you're dealing with materially and financially. It's God's will. Let's just establish that. God wants you to prosper and you have not arrived. He wants to give you a whole lot more than what you presently have. Because not enough, just enough is not enough to be a blessing to somebody else. The best way to help the poor is not to be one of them. you got to have an abundance so you can be a blessing. And to, and to pray, Lord, just, if you pray, Lord, bless my wife, my son, my daughter, my, uh, my, my son, my daughter, bless us for and no more. That's selfish. Amen. There are two ways now to prosper. There are two ways to prosper in the earth. You can prosper in the world system that's ruled by the devil. And if you're going to operate in the world system, you're going to be at a disadvantage because the world system does not favor minorities. It doesn't favor Christians and it does not favor the poor. OK, because the devil's over that system. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says. But then there's another way to prosper, and that's in the word. The ungodly, we know, prosper through the world system. That's Psalm 73, verse 3 and 12. God's system, and, and remember now, we've established it's God's will for you to prosper. But the question is, how does it, how does it happen? How does God prosper us? Why does it look like some are prospering and some are not? We know, we know, according to 2 Peter 3, 9, that... The will of God does not automatically come to pass. What do you mean? Second Peter 3, 9 says, it's the will of God that everybody repent and be saved. So if God's will was automatic, everyone would be automatically saved. But people go to hell all the time because they won't receive Jesus. And the only way to get to heaven is that you have to receive Jesus as Savior. So now, how then does God prosper people? Number, Okay, here's the answer. The answer to that question is, God prospers his people through his laws of the kingdom of God. That's how he does it. That's Psalm 103, verse 19. That's how God does it. God, now, now, now if you're going to prosper God's way, you're going to have to follow the laws of the kingdom of God. Everything God does, he does according to a pattern and based on a principle. Now, you and, you and Psalm, go to Psalm 5. I got five divine Spirit feel Holy Ghost divine laws that are guaranteed. I state, I've been passing over 35 years. I'm not new to this, I'm true to this. I, I state all of my ministry on what I'm about to tell you. I promise you, I guarantee you, if you follow these five divine laws of prosperity, you will get it, it will get you to your wealthy place. Amen. As I said earlier, my wife and I live an exceptional, amazing, supernatural lifestyle beyond our talent, skill, and education. Every need is met in our house. Every bill is paid. We, 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 own, we, own, we don't own nothing on our houses, our automobiles, no credit card, student loan, no tax debt, no notes, and no balances. We have one of the best marriages in the world. My wife is my very best friend. Our children are saved. We're, we are physically fit. We're in the best physical condition of our lives. Thank God. Healthy, full of energy. And it's not because I'm a preacher because preachers don't get discount tickets. <laughs> Amen. It's because we decided that we're going to do this. No, we made up our mind. We're going we to do this. We're going we, 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 we to do this word. We're going we to do what God tells us to do. Amen. Yeah, he, he's the one in charge, and he calls the shots in our lives, in our lives. God has blessed us, and, uh, as I, and I'm going to try to give you some of my testimonies as I go through this. And, and you know, every, testimonies should inspire you, not intimidate you. When I hear about the testimonies of what God is doing in other people's lives and other Christians' lives, listen, when you hear that God is handing out blessings uh, to your neighbor, that tells you he's in the neighborhood. I mean, listen, there's no problem. And in other words, tell somebody, you got next, you got next. Several years ago, my church, uh, during our pastoral anniversary, nobody, I didn't tell them to do it. They did it. They decided. They got together. They gave me a Phantom Rolls Royce. Uh, it cost over $300,000. I didn't pay a dime for it. They gave me a Phantom Rolls Royce, right, and, uh, and $89,000 at my past. That was a good day. That was a good day. Now, don't hate. Don't hate. God. I told y'all. I said, I said, don't. don't. 
Don't get intimidated. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Tell somebody to stick with him. No, 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 no. Amen, amen. All right, all right. So, 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 so I got the Rolls Royce. I got the Mercedes Benz. I got all these cars. And, uh, and so I, 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 but my family, my family, you know, grandkids growing. I got seven kids, then their grandkids coming. I said, man, I can't, if I want to go out of town, I can't take no, I can't throw no grandkids and everybody in no Rolls Royce. So, I told my, uh, I told a guy, he was, uh, he's, a, he's a veteran, Brother McGee, he's been here with me. Uh, he, he, he was in the, he was in the car dealership business, whatever. Anyway, I, he, I told him I wanted, I need a van. So he, he would bring me a van, I, and I let my family sit in everything. And uh, do y'all like it? No, well, keep, keep, keep it coming. Because I don't, I don't go sit in the booth no more. You know, I just sit in the booth, and they go, you know, run your credit, and I have to pray and believe. All that. No, I don't do none of that. They bring the cars to me. I don't go to no car. They brought my Rolls Royce to me. See, if I like it, I'm not going to go. I, I, I don't sit in no booth. You come to my house. I check it out, and if not, take that back. Bring me something else. Tell somebody that's another level. I said that's another level. So finally, they decided on one. They said, oh, I like this. I like it. I said, sit in and like it. I like this. I said, okay, I want it. I, I cut the check, $60,000, cash money, it's mine. Clean it up, bring it back. That's how we roll. I want you to know that there's a whole nother level than where you are right now. God's getting ready. Tell somebody something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. I'm going to lay this, anoint, no, this prosperity anointing on you today. Watch this. Five divine laws everything God does he does according to a pattern based on a principle this is the road map the blueprint here it is now law number one is the law of favor everybody say favor look at Psalm 5 the law of favor Whew. favor is about to increase over your life I'm going to show you how everybody say favor favor comes before money yeah, favor. Favor opens doors that no man can shut. Let me give you a definition of what favor is. The favor of God is special recognition, endorsements, gifts, or preferential treatment that you receive from God that you did not earn. Leave that up there. My God. It's, it's special recognition. This is what's getting ready to increase in your life right now. It's special. You, did, you didn't meet men's qualifications. You didn't meet men's requirements. But, but people are impressed by your products and services and your performance. They People, uh, you, you, don't, you don't have the education, but you still get the job. You, you don't have, the, your score was not the highest. You didn't have the right score, but they still let you in the school or the program. I'm talking about favor. You don't have the experience, but they still promote you. You don't have the resources, but God raises up somebody somewhere to use their power, their ability, and their influence to help you. Everybody say favor! Favor, favor, favor will change facts. Favor, your, your life carries a flavor of favor. And the Bible says in Psalm 5, there it is in verse number 12. For you, O Lord, will bless the righteous with You, O Lord, will bless the righteous with what? Shout out favor. Shout it out like you're yelling at your kids. <laughs> with favor, you will surround him as with a shield. I need four men up here right now. Four men up here. You come four men up here and surround me right now. The Bible, yo, that, that's what it says in the Bible. Just, just make a circle around me holding hands. Four men up here in a circle holding hands around me. All right? In a circle holding hands. Surround him as with a, as with a what? They represent your favor shield. Wherever you go in the courtroom, yeah, I don't care if you guilt, the favor, favor, favor going to go for your child, favor in that court situation. Watch this now. Uh, when you go for the interview, something about your, your application, it, favor, favor. When you walk through the door for the job, when you go in the school to apply for the scholarship, and, 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 and maybe some, but, but favor, they gon' don't let me through now. They gon' because they strong. So, so they gonna run into your 
favor shield. Oh, man, see how that thing bounced back? My God, they're going to run into your favor shield. <laughs> Lord Jesus, they strong. <laughs> that's the, that's the, tell somebody, that's that favor on your life. Favor. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, I'm surrounded by the favor of God. Give them a hand clap. Thank you. Go over to Psalm 44. Favor, favor. We see it throughout the Bible. We see favor, uh, favor, opening doors that no man can shut. That's Revelations 3 and 8. Because of God's favor on your life, petitions are granted to you even by ungodly authorities. People will change policies and rules and regulations on your behalf. You'll win battles that you don't even have to fight because God fights them for you. I want you to confess now. Say this with me. Say, I'm favored by God. I'm Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I have favor with God and man. People go out of their way to bless me. Thank you, Lord, for favor. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at Psalm 44. Make sure your neighbor has it now. The Bible says that Esther um, was, was chosen by the king. Uh, Vash and I messed up, and the, and, the, and the king, they had something like a beauty contest to see, was going, see who was going to be the next queen. All of them was fine. All the women were looking good. But what made Esther stand out was that the Bible says in Esther 2 and 17 that the favor of God was on her life. The Bible says in Daniel 1, 9 that Daniel and his comrades went to the top of the class because of the favor of of God. Joseph, although he was in a foreign land, he was a slave. He didn't have any rights or privileges. But wherever he went, because of the grace and favor on his life in Genesis 39, he was always promoted. The Bible says in Luke 2:52 that Jesus, he grew in stature and in favor with God and man. That's why crowds came from everywhere to hear him. That's why he would go up to a man, a tax collector, and say, follow me. And they dropped everything and followed him because of the favor of God on his life. And that favor is getting ready to increase over your life. What do you do? What do you do when the person who, who, who was, what do you do when the person who was helping you leaves you? Listen, let me tell you something. If they can make it without you, you can make it without them. Mm. You are designer's original. Mm. You, no, 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 no. When the favor of God is on their life, listen, it's their loss. What, what do you do when, the, when your best friend betrays you? What do you do when relationships change just when you need them the most? What do you do when the job you were counting on laid you off, fired you, and moved to Mexico? What do you do when life hits you from the blind side? I'm telling you what you're going to do. You're going to confess the favor of God. And look at this. Look at this. Favor will get you some stuff that money can't even buy. The Bible says in Psalm 44, are you there? Notice Psalm 44 and verse 3. For they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance. Watch this. Because you what them? Because you what them? You favored them. Favor, favor enables you to enjoy that which you didn't have or labor for. Favor brings you to a table you didn't have to buy. Mm. The favor of God will influence any and every kind of relationship you have. It will influence family relationships, friendship relationships, business relationships, ministry relationships, and yes, it will even, it will even, favor of God will influence romantic relationships. Do you not know they say, the statistics say, that one in, only one in four women in America will ever even be proposed to. Well, I'm, I'm here to tell you, because of the favor of God, you the one. You the one if you want to get married. Now, I told a young lady the other day, and, and, and get ready to put Ruth chapter 3. Listen, I told a young lady the other day, I said, your problem is, because I, I got tired of her, you know, talking about she want a husband. I said, let me tell you something. Number one, number one. <laughs> Number one, your attitude is too nasty. You got to change that nasty attitude. Ain't no man trying to put up with all that attitude. You're just like your mama. 
And then I told her, I said, you need to take the advice of Naomi. Naomi told Ruth, she said, let me tell you something. I know, I'm going to tell you how to get Boaz. I'm going to tell you how to get the, one of the best men in the land. I'm going to tell you how to get your Boaz. Ruth chapter 3, verse 3 in the Message Bible. Listen at what Naomi told that girl. It's very practical. She said, take a bath, put on some perfume, get all dressed up, and go. If you are battling with bathing, you ain't ready for no man. But I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you right now. Appearance does matter. Men are visual. Amen. You're cute, but you're mean. You need to be nicer. Amen. And you need to stay out the mall with them bonnets on, them pajamas on, and your bedroom slippers on. You don't go out in public with no doggone bonnet, pajamas, and bedroom slippers. I said it. I meant it. And I'm here to represent it. Everybody said favor. That's for all the women who got a man and all the women who want one. Put that back up. What Naomi told her, take a bath, put on some perfume, and get all dressed up. Oh, Lord. Everybody said favor. God told the children of Israel in Exodus 3.21, so you won't go out empty. Favor originates with God, but it's delivered through people. Someone is going to speak a word on your behalf. One day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor. The favor of God. Did I read Psalm 44? Did I read it? I want to read it one more time. It says, verse 3, and they did not gain possession. You can have more degrees than a thermometer, but so, there's some stuff that only favor can get you. And they, watch it, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, God, your arm in the light of your count, because you favored them. You favored them. It was your favor on them, God. It was your favor that increased over their life. It was your favor that caused them to get it. It was your favor that caused it to happen. Everybody said favor. God's got a whole lot of ways to bless you. He'll even bless you through your enemies. He'll cause people to like you. Amen. If you start confessing, I want you every day, how did you get up? Just, just, just confess. Just say, I'm favored by God. Look in the mirror. I'm favored by God in Jesus' name. And watch what happens. Number two, go to 1 Corinthians 13. 1 Corinthians 13, the first law is the law of favor. The second law is the law of love. Everybody say love. 1 Corinthians 13. So, all right, now, so first of, what's the first law? Favor. favor doesn't mean you ain't never going to go through anything. It means that God will bless you to come out on top. Amen. I said amen. I need you to start claiming the favor of God and speaking the favor of God over your life. Amen. I'm favored. Say, say I'm favored by God. Amen. The Bible said if you, when you get married, Proverbs 18, 22 says he who finds a wife obtains favor of the Lord. Yeah, you want, brother, you increase, you step into the flow of favor of the favor of God if you treat that woman right. No more beating and cheating and acting a fool. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, thank God he ain't talking about nobody on our road. No, no, we don't, we, don't, we don't play no beating and cheating now, come on. And by the way, let me just say this, dating while separated but not yet legally divorced is adultery. You're not free to date. Lord. All right, I'm moving on. 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse, verse Corinthians, see, I, I put my sneakers on because I'm going to run out of here in a minute. But look at it, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 13, everybody say love. love. Now, I said, I'm talking about prospering in God's way, not the world's way. The world is, man, you know, can't all you get, get all you can, can't all you get. And, and poison the rest, step on who you got to step on to get to the ladder, ladder of success. It, you know, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world and all that. that but, but I'm talking, I ain't talking about the world's way. I'm talking about God's way. Did you not know, even though you are a giver, what? You a giver. You a tither and a giver. 
The Bible connects, not me, the Bible connects godly prosperity to our love walk. Your failure to relate property to others will undermine the return of your giving. Yep. You're going to have to learn now. Now, this is, this ain't, this, this look, this, 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 this is big boy Christianity right here. You know, you got to take them bloomers off, put some drawers on. This is serious. This is serious, serious, serious. You're going to have to learn. Lady Leconte, she said it. You're going to have to learn to respond in love and not in the flesh. Because if Satan can't get you in your actions, watch this, he'll get you in your reaction. Come on now, you came to, without limits, you got saved, got filled with the whole, you're serving, you're doing good now. You, you know, you, you, you didn't, you know, everybody started as a babe in Christ and you, you know, you got to grow spiritually. So now you got you to the point where you, don't, you, you ain't smoking no more weed, you ain't drinking no more liquor, and you ain't running no more women. So the devil says, wait a minute, I can't get him on that. I can't get him on that. He ain't get, he getting high no more. Somebody said, what that mean? Don't worry about it. But everybody, <laughs> eh, 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 at least five folk on your no road know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> so you ain't doing that no more? So the devil said, oh, man, I can't get him on that no more. I can't get her on that no more. When she having that lonely Friday and that dude calls, she, man, she, ah, I can't get her. So the devil said, I know what I'm going to do. I can't get her. I can't get him in his actions. I'm going to get him in his reactions. I'm going to set him up to get upset. I'm going to get somebody to fool with her on that job. And I'm going to get her to go off. And the Bible says, everybody said the Bible says. Yeah, the Bible says love. Look, are y'all that in 1 Corinthians 13? Look at verse number three. Verse number three says, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give, I give, circle, highlight that word, I give, I give, I, I, I give, I give my body to be burnt, but watch it, but have not love. So watch this. I give, but have not love. I give, but have not love. It profits me nothing. What? You mean tell me I'm giving? Listen, I've been... My wife and I, we've been six-figure givers for years, man. In fact, uh, not long ago, we, had some, we, we got a check for $300,000 at one time, and, man, we, we tied off that thing. Wasn't no problem. We was doing 10-10 we was doing, uh, 10 at that time, 10% tied, 10% offering, and it was no problem whatsoever. We are big givers. Big givers are big livers. There once was a man, some called him mad, but the more he gave, the more he had. I believe in giving. I, I do, I do, I believe. But watch this now. You mean to tell me I'm giving, and I'm giving, and because my love walk is off, I am, sh I am, uh, listen, let me say it like this. Your failure to properly relate to others will undermine the return on your giving. You kind on the job, but you nasty at home. Love is a desire to benefit others, even at the expense of self, because love desires to give. Mm, mm, mm. The Bible says, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who despitefully use you and pray for those. You, but man, most Christians ain't doing none of that. Most Christians, if you get them wrong, if you catch them wrong, they will literally cuss you out. Tell your neighbor, say, thank God he ain't talking about nobody on my road. <laughs> if you're going to prosper God's way, amen. Number three is words. Everybody say words. Mark eleven twenty three. Jesus said, you will have in life what you uh, habitually say over and about your life. James 3 says that your tongue is the steering wheel of your life. Your tongue is the steering wheel of your life. Joel 3, 10 says, let the weak say I'm strong. Words are go-getters. So now words are made more to create than to communicate. The fourth law, I got, watch this. So now I'm not going to talk poor. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about what I can't afford. I'm going to speak life to my economic situation. I'm going to say God supplies all my needs. My bills are always paid on time and I'm living the rich life. I'm always in a position to give. I have more than enough money for the things I want and I can help others. That's how I'm going to talk. I have more than enough. Money just keeps coming in every way. I'm blessed and, I'm, I'm, and I am a blessing. That's how you're going to talk. 
Speak life over your finances. Law number four is the law of growth. Mark 4, 28 says, first the blade, then the ear, after that, the full corn in there. Now listen to me carefully. God is not a God of overnight. God is not a God of get rich quick. That's not the way it works in the kingdom of God. I tell people, I know what the society we live in, and we live in a society, man, you know, they pray, Lord, give me patience, but do it now. We don't want to wait for nothing. I mean, boy, we want to throw the biscuit in there, and if it don't blow up right away, we live in a, in a microwave, jiffy cornbread, soup in a cup, quick, express lane, overnight delivery, curbside pickup culture. But I don't care. God is not a God of overnight. Hurry is the flesh trying to do more than the spirit is leading it to do. Can I take five more minutes? Can I? Okay, watch it. I'm going to close right this. Growth requires time and patience. Listen to pastor. I didn't get rich overnight. The Bible said, the Bible says in, in Exodus 23, 30, it was little by little. Little by little. I tell folk. Hurry is the flesh trying to do more than the spirit's leading it to do. Don't let your flesh set your wedding date. Slow up. Slow down. Take your foot off the gas. Amen. Amen. And then number five is the law of giving and receiving. That's Philippians 4.15. I'm not, I'm not a giver. I'm a giver. <laughs> Jesus said in Luke 6.38, give and it shall be given. I'm a sowing machine. I believe. In the law of seed time and harvest time. And remember now, you haven't given until you tithe. So I've been tithing since I was 15, since I got saved, because tithing is the foundation of the prosperous life in the kingdom of God. Don't tell me you got an iPhone, an iPad, an iPod, but you can't say I tithe. Don't tell me you're getting your nails done and your weave and your eyelashes and movie and co movie concert tickets and going shopping and ball games and, and taking God's tithe and doing it's just a dime out of every dollar. Amen. Tell your neighbors and neighbor, there's not a God robber among us. Now these laws, I, that's five laws, guaranteed to work. But they don't work overnight. Slow don't mean no. Every delay is in your favor. How many of y'all, I'm closing with this, have ever, ever used or at, le at least seen a traditional old-fashioned water pump? How many of y'all ain't never used a water pump? A water pump. Put the picture up there. You ain't never? How many of y'all ain't never used one of them? I mean, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, but my grandma and them lived in, in the South. And, and for years, they ain't had no running water. That's how you got your dishes washed and, 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 and. clothes washed. Man, get, get him $20. Get him $20. Hurry up. Clothes washed. That, 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 that. Listen, that's an old-fashioned water pump. Listen to me very carefully. For those that don't have a clue how that thing work, let's help them out. Let me have that bottle of water, Mike. Quickly, quickly, Mike, like, you, like you're on the basketball court. Yeah, thank you. Okay, watch this. In order to prime that pump, what's the first thing you need? Water. You need some water. You need some water. Now, now, huh? You need water. You need water. Thank you. So, so this water going to represent money. It's going to represent your giving and all that. Now, what I'm going to do with this water? Because we got to show them that, because a lot of folk don't know what I'm going to do with this water. I'm going to pour the water. In the, in the pump, right? And what I'm going to do with the handle? I'm going to pump it. I'm going to pump the handle while I'm pouring, right? Now, why? Okay, help us out. Why is it that I don't want to stop pouring and giving? Why? why? I'll stop the flow in the process. If Listen, you got to keep pouring while you're pumping the handle. Right? If you stop, you got to start over. You got to keep on coming to church, keep on serving, keep on giving when it looks like ain't nothing happening. Now watch this. How, now I'm going to see. How do y'all know when you're getting real close to getting some water? You're pouring it in. It, oh, it gets hard. Oh, when, it's, when it gets real hard, you know you're getting close. Do not stop. Because it's getting hard. Don't quit because it looked like ain't nothing happening. God said you are close. It's on the way. You on the verge of a miracle. Because
pretty soon, water gonna come out and you gonna drink and quench your thirst. Every head bow, every eye closed, nobody moving, nobody leaving. We're going to pray. Father God, right now I'm asking that you seal this word in the heart of your people. Seal it so the devil won't steal it in Jesus' name. Now our heads about, eyes are closed, Christians are praying. Listen to me carefully. Pastor, Pat is going to come to altar calls, but listen to me. There's a song that we all love. If you ever heard it, I know you love it. C.C. Winding, I don't think she wrote it, but she, she popularized it. The words are, I love you, Lord. Your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Because all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you've been so good. With every breath that I'm able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I've lived in the goodness of God. While heads about, eyes are closed. I ask Lady Lecante, could I just pray over you concerning a situation that you're dealing with right now. God's going to show his goodness to you in a greater way. It may be a parenting situation. You know, that child, that child. Maybe it's a marital situation. Your spouse. Maybe it's financial. Just not enough, Pastor. I got more month than money. I got more bills than I'm able to pay right now. I need God to move. Maybe it was a bad report from the doctor. Thank God for doctors. Thank God for medicine. But doctors don't have the last word. They, they are practicing medicine. Yeah, they're practicing. But I know Jesus who never lost a case. Maybe it's something uh, on the job. Somebody's doing something, trying to do something. All that kind of stuff. I got good news for you. God never ends on a negative. He always ends on a positive. God's got your back. And he has not forgotten about you. There's some mama here. Some daddy who you love, you love your children. But you're tired of not being appreciated. You're tired of being pointed, point, them pointing out the one thing you didn't do right and ignoring the 12 things you did do right. You're tired of standing up to their mood and their temperament and their attitudes. And you need God to show his goodness to you. Pastor Grant, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? I, 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 I've been pouring in, but it's getting hard. And I know I'm close. I know something's about to happen. Just pray to God to give me more grace. Give me finishing grace that I don't quit. Would you pray for me? Would you pray for my family? While heads about eyes are closed, Christians are praying. Would you stand right now? Let me pray over you. Can you stand? Just stand right where you at. Your goodness is running out. It's running out. Close your eyes and lift your hands halfway. Your goodness is running out. It's running out.
has not forgot With about my you. Life laid down. that hand. Father, I just pray right now that you give them more grace. Grace is ability, unmerited favor, ability, power. I, I'm asking you, God, to supernaturally give them strength on, in their inner man. Strengthen them on the inside. Thank you for that finishing grace. <laughs> I don't care what it looked like right now. Give them the assurance that you got their back that they're still in your hands and it ain't over until they win. I bless them right now. I decree in their home, in their marriage, children, finances, their mind, their body. Shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken. I decree and declare it. I speak it over them in Jesus' name. Sing another chorus of that. Come on. Your goodness, your goodness is running, it's running out. Hallelujah. We just want to give a couple other simple appeals. Uh, some of y'all sealed the deal today by standing up in faith as Dr. Grant gave that invitation. So you sealed the deal where you are. Uh, but we also want to give those an opportunity this morning to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior if they have not done so. With heads bowed and eyes closed and believers praying all over the building. Father, we just thank you for the anointing that has been here in this service. And God, we thank you that you touched hearts. And God, just like there were those who stood, there were those who we were going to commit today, Father, and fill out that connection card and make that commitment. So we want to give you that opportunity today to surrender to Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 9 teaches us that if we will confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, that we shall be saved. Amen. And maybe you're uh, watching us online or you're in the room and you have been saved. You just need to rededicate yourself. Maybe you made a few mistakes and God doesn't want you to beat yourself up. You got to realize God is not mad at you. God loves you. And by repenting, it doesn't put you at the back of the line. It simply puts you back in line. First John 1 and 9 says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the third and final appeal is if you want to join our church today, uh, we just want to encourage you to take that step of faith and seal the deal in that area if that's you. And I just want to encourage you, if you're online, they'll post uh, the link for you for the connection card. Uh, if you are in the building, there's connection cards right in front of you. You can also utilize that QR code to make that easy for you. And uh, on the back of the connection card or at the bottom of uh, where you're scrolling, you can also submit prayer requests. Just know that those prayer requests are received in confidence and prayed over throughout the week. Amen. So whether you're making that decision today, that first time commitment, if you're making a renewal or you want to join uh, this church I just want to lead us all in a prayer and maybe you've already prayed this prayer but truth be told it's going to help the person sit sitting next to you and actually we can all pray this prayer so please repeat after me say father i come to you asking you to forgive me for sinning against you a holy god i know jesus died and shed his blood just for me jesus come into my heart be my lord be my savior, and from this day forward, I'll serve you. Now, Satan, I denounce you and every evil work. You have nothing to do with me, and I have nothing to do with you. 
Jesus is my Lord. He's my Savior. And I'll always serve Him. Now, Father, we give you praise right now for what you have done in this morning's service. In Jesus' name, can everybody put their hands together? Amen, amen. Praise God.